Guys, welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath and I am glad you're here. And today, here is the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Not only is this ground zero for the space program research that was done in the 1950s and the 1960s, the home of the Saturn V rocket, this is also where they shot Space Camp. And since we're going into the danger zone, aviators on. And this building, guys, this is where, as they say, the magic happens. This is the space camp habitat, or at least habitat number one. This is where the kids come to learn about space and be the flight leaders and the astronauts of tomorrow. I know nothing for a fact, but I suspect that this is a cabin for space campers. We want to talk about something that looks straight out of Epcot. This is awesome. So this is the rocket park at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. They have actual rockets. This is like a rocket graveyard. These guys are pretty big. But this guy right here is massive. And how many times in your life do you get to actually walk underneath a rocket ship? This is the... This is the, the undercarriage of a rocket looking up the rocket I hope they don't turn it on right now okay so the gigantic rocket the, the space rocket that we just walked under uh, is Saturn 1 from 1964 this is Saturn 1 right here those of you that are familiar with the movie Space Camp might recognize this archway this archway right here, uh, heavily featured in the movie Space Camp. You can tell because of this very specific material that the, uh, the construction was made out of. But this is like, for some of us who grew up in the 80s, this is an iconic bit of architecture right here. I really do love this architecture. This is a very specific uh, type of architecture that I feel like was popular in the 60s and the 70s and kind of has completely gone away as being very dated but uh, I don't know, like there's just something that's very futuristic about it. It's that retro future that if you watch this channel, you know that I love. I love that very retro future. It's like the future that never was. Only here, it kind of was. Man, one of these days, I'm going to be up there in the stars. Nothing's going to hold me back. And when one rocket isn't enough, here's a second gigantic rocket. Just towering into the sky. Look at, look at how tall that is. So they have this place called the Mars Grill here. This is like a cafeteria style uh, dining area. And this is the menu that they have. They have it's, it's traditional stuff, burgers, hot dogs, pizza, um, fajitas, things like that. They also have some noodle bowls, some vegetarian options, which is pretty cool. And the, uh, the soft drinks come with a souvenir cup. So that's pretty cool too. I don't think we're gonna get anything to eat right now but uh, if we do, we will definitely show it off. Okay, so we opted for a hamburger. Uh, it's just meat and bread. They have a fixins bar, so you get tomato, lettuce, whatever. And here's the stuff that you can put on your burger. The tomato, lettuce, onion. Looks pretty good. So this is the sign for the Mars Grill, and uh, they got some pretty cool stuff. They have this uh, little setup right here, so you can get a sample of what the food is. But it's very important that if you're hungry, you should get something because it's the last food for 36 million miles. So guys, this office right here is basically a recreation of Werner von Braun's actual office. That's his desk. Uh, these things were donated to this museum. And this, this is a Hugo Award for the book Conquest of the Moon from 1953. One of the things that I think is cool about this exhibit is it talks a lot about the dreaming aspect of, uh, 
of uh, the space program and they have like a whole little section over here for Enterprise beginning with the Starship Enterprise from Star Trek and then going through the process of like realizing an actual space shuttle Enterprise. And according to this little tidbit right here, the shuttle Enterprise was originally going to be called Constitution in honor of the 200th anniversary of the U.S. Constitution, but Star Trek fans wrote in and had the name of the shuttle changed to the Enterprise. Beam me up. I really dig this illustration too because this is like an early idea of what rockets were going to be and obviously no rocket ever ended up actually looking like this. This is some serious 50s Cold War stuff right there. I love it. And they have this area here for kids that they can get their hands on stuff. It's like very uh, science-minded, sketch it, create it, try it, and they have a lot of practical applications where uh, if you have kids, they can really get in here and get their hands on the scientific stuff. Speaking of kids and getting their hands on science experience, they have this exhibit running through September 3rd, 2018 called Math Alive, and this is very much uh, like practical science, like getting involved, getting interactive with things. They have a lot of things here that are like that. If you have a local science center in your town, this is similar to that. They have a lot of, uh, it's just hands-on science stuff so that your kids can learn about uh, actually how science works, what it does. They got some really cool stuff here. Check out these like, this is the robot rally. This is a bunch of like robots that people have built. This is pretty cool. Like on this thing, they want you to do a, they want you to make a pattern with these pieces without any overlapping, without gaps or any overlaps. And this is like a game where you can play, you want to design a tall building using the tools that they give you on this, uh, on the screen. Like this is a roller coaster that you can build, uh, and this is like a fully functional roller coaster. Starts with this you have Ferris wheel on top, and then a roller coaster all the way down the side of this rocket using practical math. Welcome home and congratulations on a great flight. Long range traffic cameras at the Kennedy Space Center picking up the first image of the shuttle at a distance of 16 miles from the landing. So this is the Saturn V hall and inside this building they have a uh, it's it's not the actual Saturn V but it is a accurate uh, the, the the parts in here go back to the Saturn V space program their mid 50s uh, well I believe the way it was explained to me is that the parts uh, the, the rocket that they have inside of here was used for stress testing and it was um, like a one-to-one -one recreation used for testing before they actually sent the the real Saturn V into space so inside this building is a massive rocket let's go check it out Another thing that's cool about this hall is they have this, hey, there's us. Uh, we have this whole long uh, stretch of whatever these are, billboards, plaques, whatever, and they give the history of the space program slash the Saturn V. It's essentially the Saturn V story, but I kind of feel like the Saturn V story is the space program story. Very, very cool stuff. It talks about the space race and the road to the space race, to the Rocketeers, which these are the men who worked on the Saturn V. They brought scientists and engineers from all around the country here to Huntsville, Alabama, where they began work on the Saturn V. Guys, they have an actual command module from Apollo 16. This command module has been to the moon and back. This is the actual command module. Uh, April 16th, 1972. This was launched into space. You can see like how how small it is, is how tight those quarters are. If you're claustrophobic, this would be this would be pretty rough. 
And this is a recreation of a lunar landing module. Uh, you know, you see these in footage from space flights and stuff, and they, they don't seem that big. This thing is huge. This thing is like three stories tall. And they also have a, uh, a lunar rover here, too. Okay, so here we are at the other end of the Saturn V hull, and I just want to give you some perspective of the whole 360, whatever, how many feet this was, from the other end, going all the way down the hall. This thing is absolutely massive. This is so cool. They have so much stuff in the gift shop. If you're here for space camp, or you're here for just like visiting or whatever, they have so much cool stuff in here. Check out these little flight suits for kids. These are amazing. You get the flight suit and the hat. You have it in white, orange, and blue. All right, we are wrapping up for the day, leaving the Space and Rocket Center. I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of the property. So here's the outside of the building. I'm on the, uh, the side. There's one of the big rockets that they've got. Uh, the building over here leads to a courtyard. I've just noticed this monument here in the courtyard for a squirrel monkey. It was the first U.S. animal to fly in space and return alive. This is a monument. And someone has left some bananas for Miss Baker. It's very sweet. Guys, that is going to do it today from the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. I hope you had as much fun watching this as I had filming it. Uh, I've, I was here years ago. This place is so much bigger than I remembered it being. It is really, really impressive. If you get a chance to come, uh, I highly recommend you check it out. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff like this, travel destinations, cool stuff, let me know. So uh, I appreciate you watching, and I will catch you later.